we can't actually configure a Microsoft Exchange account if Outlook is running. And you might be saying to yourself, well, hang on a second. That's how we created new IMAP and POP accounts. How exactly are we supposed to create an account in Outlook if Outlook isn't running? The answer is that Exchange accounts are actually managed by the operating system. So in this case, it's Windows 8. If you're using any other version of Windows, it'll be basically the same process. We simply need to access the control panel. And the control panel in all versions of Windows has a mail icon. That's what we want to access. Since I'm using Windows 8, I'm going to do it the fast and easy way. I'm going to go ahead and press the Windows key on my keyboard, which takes us to the start screen. And from the start screen, I can simply type what I'm looking for, which in this case is mail. This brings up the search screen, which is great because it does find the mail app, but we're not looking for the app. We're actually looking for the control panel setting. So from the right side of the screen, we need to move over and tap or click on settings. And this is the option that we want. So we'll go ahead and give this a click or a tap. As I said, regardless of which version of Windows you have, simply find a way to access your control panel and look for the mail icon. Once you launch it, you'll see the mail setup window that looks like this. From here, we can actually create and show profiles. So if multiple people are using the same computer, they can all have their own Outlook profile, and this is where you would add them and manage them. You also can work with data files. We are interested in creating a new email account, so we're going to click or tap the very first option that says Email Accounts. This window may look familiar because it's exactly the same setting that you'll see when you click on File, and go to Account Settings from within Outlook. But remember, even though everything from this point forward is exactly the same as it would be from within the application, if you try to launch and create an Exchange account from within Outlook, it will tell you you can't, and you'll simply have to close everything down. So it's the same location, but we got here a different way by using Control Panel. And now we can go ahead and see that we have one account configured, but we want to create another one. So we'll click or tap on New. Finally, we get into the Add Account window that we were looking for. We want to add an email account, and we can, of course, type our name, which we'll go ahead and do. It's also helpful if we go ahead and fill in information here. It just saves us time in the next screens, so we'll do that as well. And, of course, with every email and every account, you have to have the passwords. So far, this is pretty much the same as setting up any other account, but here's what we're going to do that's different. We're going to move down to the bottom left and select Manual Setup, and then click or tap Next on the bottom right. Here we get to see all of the different types of accounts, our good old friends POP and IMAP, as well as Outlook.com or Exchange Active Sync accounts, which would be for mobile devices. We're going to stick with the default at the very top, which is a Microsoft Exchange server account. With that, we're going to click or tap Next one more time on the bottom right of the screen. Now we're finally ready to get into the nitty gritty of configuring an Exchange account. The first thing that you have to know, in addition to your username and password, is the name of your server. Without the name of the server, Outlook has no way of knowing where it's supposed to go look for your email. It's kind of like sending somebody down the street and saying, just go find it, even though they don't have an address in which to find your mail. So we simply need to type in the name of our server as our very first step. At this point, I strongly recommend that you take a very close look at this, because again, if there's anything that's wrong with it, one simple typo, it's not going to work, and that'll be frustrating. So take the time to read through it, double and maybe even triple check it to make sure that it's accurate. If you're working internally inside of an office and Exchange is hosted on your own network, this may be all of the information you need. But remember, there are a bajillion different ways that Outlook can be configured and hosted, so you might need some help figuring out exactly what information you need in addition to the server. Before I move on, I did want to acknowledge that there's a little checkbox here that says Use Cached Exchange Mode. This is basically the ability to keep an offline copy of our account data in case the network is ever down or we're working on a laptop maybe while flying or in a hotel room and we don't have network access. Cached Exchange Mode and some of its enhancements and new features are discussed in detail in another video, but now at least you know what that checkbox is for. We may be tempted to go down and click Next, but what we know is we need to have more settings. So we're going to click or tap the more settings option on the bottom right of the screen instead. This brings up, yes, another window. So there are very few things that we have to actually deal with here, but some of them are absolutely critical to getting your Exchange account to work. The general information lets you give your account a name. 
Michael Brooks is just fine for us, so we're not going to do anything here. From the second tab, which is advanced, we can actually open additional mailboxes in addition to the one that Michael Brooks has. This might be useful if, for example, he also oversaw an IT mailbox that was general for the company. Again, we're not going to do that. The third tab is all about security, and security is something that can be very complex. Fortunately for us, we don't need to know a lot about it, but we may need to know what settings are required. We, again, are going to just leave the defaults. We do want to encrypt data. We do not want to always prompt for a logon. And it's okay for it to negotiate authentication as we log on to the network and security. So that leaves us just one little tab left all the way at the right, the connection tab. This is the one that's critical. This particular account is actually hosted, not internally inside our company, but using Office 365. That means we have to tell it how to go outside using the internet and access the Microsoft Office 365 server. That's what this whole tab is about. Because we're using the internet, that means we're actually going to connect to the server using HTTP, or the internet protocol. The last little bit of work that we have to do is we have to set up our Exchange proxy settings, so we'll click or tap that option. Here we go, one more window, but I promise in just a few seconds, we'll start closing all of these windows instead of opening more. We need to first tell Outlook where to go, what internet address to use to find our actual server. I'm going to go ahead and start typing this, and I want you to notice how similar it is to the first one that we did for the server itself. It is very similar, but it's a little bit different. So again, make sure that you have exactly the correct address or the whole thing isn't going to work. The next thing is talking about how it's going to connect. In case you were wondering, SSL stands for Secure Socket Layer. Again, we don't care too much about that, but we do need to connect in this particular case using proxy servers that have this principal name in the certificate. So we'll go ahead and type in that information as well. With that done, we're going to check one more box that says both on fast networks and on slow networks, we're going to connect using HTTP first. In other words, we can't connect using TCP IP. So we need to make sure that no matter what our connection speed is, we're always going to use that internet protocol. At the very bottom left, it again talks about authentication. We do not want NTLM for our specific account. We instead want BASIC. With that, we can take a very deep breath and start closing out some of these windows. We'll click or tap OK. We'll click or tap OK again. And this brings us back to our account settings wizard that we were working through. Remember, we got here by clicking or tapping the More Settings button after we entered our BASIC server username, and password information. Now, finally, we can go ahead and do one of two things. We can either click Next, or we can move up to the middle, kind of right side of the screen, and click or tap Check Name. I like to do Check Name first, because otherwise, when we click Next, it's going to do it anyway. And this way, if there are any problems, we can solve them now, instead of having to go back. You may be prompted, as a matter of fact, you probably will be prompted, to enter your username and password one more time. I recommend checking Remembering My Credentials, just so we don't have to do this again, and then click or tap OK. This is a good sign. We want Exchange and Outlook to come back and say, yes, I was able to connect to your account with all of the settings that you put in. I've checked and made sure that you put in a valid account, and if so, it will underline your username or your email address. Now we can finally go ahead and click or tap Next on the bottom right. This talks a little bit about where our data will be stored, but we'll talk about that in a different topic. So we'll say, OK, we're all set and ready to go. And that means all we have to do is click or tap Finish. If we take a look at a list of our accounts, we can see that we now have two, both the original Gmail account and now the new Exchange account that we just configured. Then we can just finish getting rid of all of the rest of these windows so that we can get back to work by actually launching Outlook.